Is there one quality that Dexter has that you could kind of, well, you would like to steal from him and, and have as your own? Yes, I think, I think. Uh, Apart from killing people. His you know, capacity, you know, he's, he's remarkably capable in lots of ways. And like I said, the show is fantastical mm. and there are things he pulls off that are really sure. just yeah. implausible. But I think what, what is the most remarkable about Dexter is his capacity for stress management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and I think that's, that's because of his ability to, as the heat goes up, his... Absolutely internal temperature goes down. Yeah, he, yeah. He, the, the crazier things get, the cooler he feels. He almost craves chaos. He almost, uh, yeah. he, he seems to attract it, cultivate it, mm. encourage it, because it's the only thing that somehow soothes him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what, if that really answered your question, but I would <clears> like <throat> to be cooler under pressure. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's very, it's, it's, it's very realistic, actually, because what you find is it, the, the more chaotic a situation, the more that psychopaths have to make decisions under pressure, uh, the better their decision-making gets. And, uh, you know, psychologists have tested this out in a lab. I'll throw out a, a, a dilemma to you guys, and I'll give you an example of this. Um, it's a famous uh, philosophical conundrum called the trolley problem, okay? So imagine you've got a train hurtling down a track, and in its path, five people are trapped on the line uh, and cannot escape. Now, fortunately, you can flick a switch which diverts the train down a fork in that track, but at a price. There's another person, one other person trapped down that fork, and the train will kill them instead. Question, should you flick the switch? Now, most people under those circumstances have, like, you know, pretty little trouble deciding what to do. Though the thought of flicking that switch isn't exactly a nice one, the, what we call the utilitarian option, uh, killing just the one person instead of the five, um, represents the least worst option, least worst choice. But let's just have a little variation on that dilemma. Let's just say that just as in the, the first one, you've got a train uh, careering out of control down a track towards five people, but this time, you are standing behind a very large stranger on a footbridge above the track, okay? The only way to save the people is to heave the stranger over. His, he will fall to a certain death, but his considerable bulk would block the train saving five lives. Question, should you flick the switch? Now, folks, we've got kind of what, what we might call a real dilemma on our hands, okay? Though the, the score in lives is precisely the same as in the first scenario, one's choice of action appears far more difficult. Now, here's the deal. When you time how long it takes uh, for uh, normal, everyday folk to make a decision about how, you know, what to do in that situation, there's no difference between psychopaths and normal people when we talk about the first scenario, right? But where the plot thickens is where we talk about the second scenario, because psychopaths have absolutely no problem at all in shoving the fat guy over the rail. Right. <laughs> okay? If that's what the doctor orders, and sometimes the doctor does order that. Okay? Now, here's, here's, here's a really interesting thing. When you look at what happens in psychopaths' brains uh, compared to normal people's brains when they're going about solving that problem, the area that's implicated is the lizard part of the brain, Michael. Mm. The, what we call the amygdala. It's the, uh, about a thumbnail size structure right in the middle of the brain. It's the emotional control tower of the brain. It's the way we process emotions. When we look at what happens with normal people and psychopaths when they solve the first dilemma, no difference in brain activation at all. But when we look at what happens when they go to solve the second dilemma, the emotion area of, of our brains would be lit up like pinball machines, but in psychopaths, the house is in darkness. There's a neural curfew in that part of the brain, and the passage from impersonal to personal slips by completely it's unnoticed. It's an identical problem to that. It's absolutely right. Absolutely identical problem. It's all a numbers game, right. uh, and that's all it is. There's no emotion involved. So under pressure, you're quite right, under pressure, and we've seen it with Dexter, almost as, a, a, you know, the more the, the, the pressure builds, the cooler he gets. And that is exactly what you see with psychopaths. It really is. But. Right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. I think, I think also the idea that, that Dexter is, is, is performing a service for society is very interesting. I think it was the, 
the writer George Orwell once said that uh, you know, good men sleep soundly in their beds at night because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. Yes. And, and I think that's precisely what Dexter is doing. I think he's the, he's, he's, he's the cuddliest of serial killers. Yeah, he? yeah. You well, I, I think all bets would be off in terms of uh, us being on the cusp of an eighth season if Dexter were killing people randomly. Um, the fact that he, that he has taken unique responsibility for his mm. darker impulses, arguably, yeah. uh, and, is, and is killing people who, again, arguably deserve it, invite us to relish the chance to identify with such mm. a reprehensible person. Mm. Um, but yeah, you could argue that he's, he's saving more lives than he's, mm. than he's ending, given the kinds of characters he does in. So he's just pushing yeah. lots of... Yeah, fat, fat guys over the road. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah.